Ben Miller here. The lovely people at Corinium Museum thought they needed to persuade me to present this piece. No persuasion required. Ridiculous. This is one of my favourite places to visit. So let me tell you about this incredible museum to be found in Sirencester, indeed the capital of the Cotswolds. Why exactly am I here? Well, following a huge amount of National Lottery Heritage Fund money, donations, sponsorship and a lot of sheer hard work, the good people and supporters of this museum have pulled off something to behold. The Corinium Museum has had a complete makeover. An extensive building and redevelopment programme now offers exceptional interactive exhibits in light and modern galleries. It really is quite remarkable. So what is there to see? Well, not only does this museum bring Roman Sirencester and the Cotswolds to life, but it also goes way, way back further in time to the Stone Age. That's hundreds of thousands of years ago. Now, this isn't a museum of looking at one object after another. Oh no, this is a museum where you can immerse yourself back in time and find out the stories of these people. You can get close to these amazing archaeological finds, discover the rich history of the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age, and then on to the early days of Corinium, what we now know as Sirencester. This museum might be our local museum, but it really does have to be seen as a national treasure. Now, there simply isn't time to tell you about all the other things, so please, please come and spend a few hours here for yourself to discover more. It's definitely a hidden gem, one for everyone to discover, and one where you can immerse yourself in the fascinating story of the Cotswolds. Now, a whole host of even more lovely people from experts, friends and supporters of this museum can explain much more to you. So I'll see you back here at the end. It's a huge honour as museum director to be able to announce that the Corinian Museum has a new beginning. The drive to embark on a major development project was in response to the challenges museums were facing at the time. There was an absolute need to ensure this museum moved into the 21st century and beyond to become more sustainable, resilient and future-proofed for generations to come. The early pre-Roman galleries look very tired especially in comparison to the more recent Roman ones, which had been transformed at the millennium. A confusing entrance with two doorways and lack of visibility from the street meant the museum was hidden. But this museum is world class, one that needs to reveal its inner workings. We have searched the stores, uncovered remarkable objects and can now display even more material. More space allows us to display important collections on loan from other museums and rare objects generously donated by the public. All of these incredible pieces have been incorporated into the new displays. It is a great achievement. When we packed up the galleries in October 2018 to allow for the project work, we put away 300 objects and today the new galleries showcase over 700 including 200,000-year-old hand axes, 6,000-year-old pottery vessels, a 2,000-year-old dog, the earliest jewellery and metal weapons and coins, and much more. The transformation is incredible. We now have a wide, spacious entrance, an inviting welcome desk, and beautifully designed interactive galleries telling the story of archaeology of the Cotswolds from the Paleolithic time to the arrival of the Romans. A new learning space, the Windstone Centre, allows us to put the behind the scenes work we do on public view. A redesigned relaxing garden space now links Jack's Cafe to the museum, where visitors can sit and enjoy time before or after a visit. And we can also boast a shop that is spacious, stylish, and full of unique gifts. We are so grateful to everyone who has been a part of this project, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you. This project would not be the success it is without the support of Cotswold District Council, the National Lottery Heritage Fund, and the museum team's knowledge, expertise, and determination. Everyone, including staff and volunteers, has played their part in this project. And I would like to thank you all for your contribution to the incredible end result. It really does exceed all my expectations. 
I had a vision to ensure the museum is in the best possible place, to be an award-winning attraction, a community hub and a centre for learning, and to help drive the economic development of the area. Stone Age to Carinium creates a museum that is relevant to today's communities, maximising on the building's spaces, enhancing the visitor journey through reinterpretation and improved access, and working with new partners to bring a vibrant programme of archaeology related events and activities. It's the stories these everyday objects reveal that delight me the most and I cannot wait to show you even more archaeology to discover. Thank you. In 1849, some of the most significant Roman mosaics, the hunting dogs and the four seasons were discovered during sewerage works in Cirencester. It was my great-great-grandfather, the fourth Earl Bathurst, who in 1856 built the original Corinne Museum to house these two fine mosaics. The Bathurst collection, together with the Cripps collection, were then gifted to the town in 1936, along with the second Corinne Museum being established here in the Park Street on this present site. This helps to explain the Bathurst family's interest, involvement and commitment to the Corinne Museum, a museum that houses a most important collection, which is of national significance. It cannot be underestimated how important Corinne was to the Romans. It was their second largest town in the British Isles and the capital of the west of Britain. An amazing feat. The Friends of the Museum is a charitable trust set up in 2006 to promote, support and improve the display of collections and articles of historic, archaeological or local and national interest. The trust also exists to assist with the acquisition of additional artefacts and visiting exhibitions. Essentially, we support and fundraise for the museum and we have a wonderful time in doing so. I shall hand over to Tony Berry to explain further. Thank you, Lord Bathurst. Our aim is to encourage public interest and involvement in the museum. One of the ways we do this is through our fundraising projects. Our Going for Gold appeal enabled the museum to raise £3,000 in public donations and secure through that a further 17,000 in grants from various funding bodies, which enabled us in turn to purchase a rare Bronze Age hoard dating between 13 and 1100 BC, which became available via the Treasure Act. It's quite an incredible story and one that has been pieced together and can now be told in perpetuity, as this collection is now ready to view in the new Stone Age to Corinium galleries. It is spectacular. History is so important, and to support a place with so much local history and national heritage is an absolute honour. We've all been behind this project from the very start. We want to ensure that Corinium Museum is the very best in its field. Why? Because these collections and the building housing them are owned by Cotswold District Council. It is in our local and national interest to support, fund and future-proof this notable and unique museum. All of us at Cotswold District Council absolutely recognise the importance of this museum as a destination for visitors and tourists and equally its significance in the preservation of archaeological finds from across the Cotswolds. With the launch of the Stone Age to Corinium Galleries, visitors now have the opportunity to view rare and unique objects, some recognised as the oldest finds of their kind in the whole of the British Isles. This mighty collection can now be viewed, touched and experienced under one roof in light, modern, interactive galleries right in the very heart of Sirencester here in Park Street. The new Stone Age to Corinium galleries are brilliant. I'm sure some people will remember the old museum from the 80s which had those dusty spooky mannequins and very little in the way of interaction. Now our museum is in an even stronger position to welcome more visitors. 
It's great for heritage and archaeology lovers, but it's also a great place to bring the kids when you need a day out that entertains them and interests you. Over 50,000 people currently visit per year, and I'm sure that figure is only set to grow. As an award-winning attraction, it offers a new community hub and centre for learning, and the welcome desk where we stand is also the town's visitor information centre. The high street faces so much pressure, but I've no doubt that the launch of these new galleries is really going to help our high streets back to life, drawing more visitors to the museum, which will in turn attract visitors old and new into the town. This can only help to rejuvenate the high street and bring more customers into our wonderful shops, cafes, pubs, hotels, an effect that I'm sure will ripple out to benefit the whole of the Cotswolds. The pandemic has brought its own challenges to the museum, but we have worked with the team here to put a number of measures in place in line with government guidelines. So visitors can be confident that the journey through the museum will be even more enjoyable with plenty of space and a clear route to follow. Most recently, we supported Amanda and her team in being one of 1,385 cultural and creative organisations to secure a lifeline grant from the government's Culture Recovery Fund, in our case, to the value of £121,000. To be able to launch the Stone Age to Crinium Galleries, to showcase even more significant artefacts, alongside this new community hub, the new Centre for Learning, and let's not forget the fabulous existing galleries this is a proud moment for the town of Sirencester and for the whole of the Cotswold district. And it's not only about the Romans. The museum tells a story from Stone Age through to Roman and onwards to Anglo-Saxon, medieval and Tudor times, right up to the modern day. It explains the wonders of our churches, the villages and towns that we see today in this stunning part of the world. To have this museum on our Cotswold doorstep is an absolute honour. It's a place we should all visit, embrace and pass the message on to others to come and visit too. Supporting this project throughout a pandemic has made us all realise how important our heritage and history is to our sense of community and place. This has been demonstrated very clearly by the sheer number of visitors we've had since reopening after the recent lockdowns. The museum looks fantastic and the new galleries are stunning. I'm so excited for people to come and see the end result. The vision of the museum is to be a leading archaeology museum that continues to evolve. Cotswold District Council is committed to maintaining our support and to continuing to push forward the importance of this collection. This is such a great piece of good news for us in the Cotswolds, it really, really is. Working a new museum design into an existing listing building while keeping it open to visit visitors was no mean feat. But thanks to the input of everyone, we managed it. And now we have a museum which flows effortlessly from arrival through history as you move from one gallery to another. The spacious welcoming aspect of the entrance and reception desk leans seamlessly into the new Stone Age to Korean galleries. These galleries are intentionally darker and dramatic to highlight the fantastic artefacts of the period. One imagines the life of an ancient Briton to be short, dark and brutal with little time for pleasure, but you can see by the craft and design of the artefacts that our ancestors' love of artistic and beautiful things was no different from ours in the 21st century. I'm proud to have been the architect on this project and to have been involved in the reimagining of the museum, in particular the design of the new reception and collection spaces. One of the most challenging areas of this redevelopment and a key part of the whole design concept and development was the difficulty in remo uh, removing the corner of the existing building that separated the shop. This was necessary to improve the links between the entrance, shop, reception and galleries and make the larger space more open. So before construction started, it was difficult without actually excavating a hole, uh, knowing the ground conditions below. Initial investigations had taken place and results suggested that the ground was very poor. Uh, when it came to digging out the foundations for the new structure, uh, our worst fears were confirmed. Uh, the building was actually sat on a, a river um, and it was hard to understand how the muse museum was actually staying up. Amanda went all out to raise additional funds and thankfully this was achieved. The structure was redesigned, some compromises were made, but the end results were entirely validated and all the efforts involved. Well, originally, um, as, as we did with the, the first scheme in 2004, the ground was piled. 
um, and we piled down to six metres to, to, to carry out the remodelling works of, let's call it phase one in 2004. Um, we were invited back in 2019 to do the refurbishment work for the front of house. Um, and, and unfortunately, we couldn't, in this instance, get a piling rig into the area that we needed to. So we found that we had to hand dig, in actual fact, excavate uh, nearly 60 tonne of loose material down to the um, existing water table, um, which was a, a significant challenge. Um, propping and shoring, making sure that at each uh, occasion, each level we um, encountered brush material, we was, it was safe working condition. And once we were happy and the engineer was happy, we basically filled it back up with concrete. Um, and then we could carry on from foundation and build the rest of the building and stabilize it. The facade remains as it should, but it's opened up the inner workings of the building to enable the scheme to work as one would like. It was a proud, proud moment. Extremely proud, extremely proud. It was a good time, good time to be here, good to be involved with it. So when you hear that the project is the culmination of six years of hard work, it really is, and it just goes to show what can be achieved with a great team, ingenious design, and a strong vision with lots of tenacity. So when you visit, please don't forget to take just a minute to appreciate the building work that has gone on behind the scenes, to the structure and the spaces, in order for the museum to be able to display, protect, and preserve these extraordinary archaeological finds. I know through my presenting work how amazing community is and I've seen what magnificent things we can do when we all pull together as a community. Now let's do something magnificent for Sirencester. Let's come together, be one strong and united community and support Corinian Museum, this fantastic historical and archaeological resource we have right here in the Cotswolds. My son Eddie loves visiting this museum and seeing all things Roman. I'm excited to be able to show him even further back in history, from Stone Age onwards. He's going to love walking into an Iron Age roundhouse, viewing the Gold Hoard and seeing the majestic tombstones. All the storytelling involved in the new teaching and learning centre and in the interactive resources is going to make such a huge difference to every single child who visits. Let's give Corinian Museum as many shout outs as we can Share the news that the Stone Age to Corinium galleries are open. Get everyone talking about it. Get everyone planning a visit. The more we support Corinium Museum, the more we understand our own history and the stronger our community will become now and in the future. So that you can experience how everyday life evolved through the Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age, we filmed specialist craftspeople making tools and utensils from those times. You can see James flint napping to make a Stone Age axe and Graham recreating a beautiful Neolithic grooved ware pot. Then you can watch as Neil makes an axe head using fire to cast metal as they did in the Bronze Age and Tom as he crafts an Iron Age ring knife from a metal rod. See the past be brought vividly to life and we go one step further these replica tools and utensils are also displayed in the new galleries for you to get even closer to the ancient past. Visitors can come and explore the culture and life of hunter-gatherers, tools and technologies and can even go inside our partial reconstruction of an Iron Age roundhouse, which is also a beautiful space for storytelling for visiting families and young groups. Stone Age to Iron Age is a primary Key Stage 2 curriculum topic, so a visit here for schools is a must. Our bright new learning centre is to be used for teaching groups for talks and community events and has many more resources available including facilities and learning materials that are suitable for all ages and fully accessible. The Roman military displays in the new galleries are ideal for students studying Latin or classical civilisations and will be of great interest to military enthusiasts. We have two tombstones of national importance that have a paint style projection bringing both the sculpture and Latin inscription to life. These displays are accompanied by a wonderful film of Roman cavalry life reenacted and narrated by members of the Ermine Street Guard. We feel that students of art, history, photography and media will find a wealth of content and inspiration from these new galleries as well as from the existing ones. Be inspired by even more archaeology. 
I've been part of a large multidisciplinary team of museum curators, archaeologists, designers, reenactors, conservators, and object specialists have all played their part in bringing this new and immersive gallery experience to you today. Let the new prehistory galleries take you on a journey through time, landscape, and technological development, introducing you to the people who left their intriguing traces of their lives behind. The new displays incorporate some of our old favourites and alongside them see some previously unseen objects. Each object has a unique story to tell about a person, a place or a technology. We begin with the tantalising secrets of the Bronze Age Beaker burial from Kingshill North, discovered by archaeologists on the edge of Cirencester. Around 4,500 years ago, during the Bronze Age, metalworking, new pottery styles and burial practices were introduced. People were buried in individual graves, sometimes covered by a barrow, with pottery vessels called beakers. The skeleton here is that of a woman aged between 30 and 40 years, who ended her days in the Cotswolds, but who was raised on the Chalklands of southern England. The fragmented remains have been carefully and respectfully pieced together by a human remains specialist and the mounting team to create this intimate and enigmatic display. The beaker vessel was sent to a specialist ceramics conservator in Liverpool who carefully reconstructed the distinctive and intricately decorated vessel you see displayed alongside the skeleton. The display is enhanced by a short film projected above the showcase, in which the archaeologist who excavated the grave and a Bronze Age burial expert tell the story of a young woman who crossed southern Britain 4,500 years ago to live in the Cotswolds. Join us on what has been a six-year adventure and visit this remarkable collection. Come and explore, be fascinated, be inspired, discover the archaeology of the Cotswolds. It is such a privilege to be president of the Friends of the Museum to support this launch of Stone Age to Corinium and to be able to carry on the Bathurst family's commitment to and passion for the Corinium Museum. We hope that you will consider becoming a friend of the museum, especially at a time when we have so many exciting plans, some of which we hope to be able to share first with our friends in the museum in the very near future. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Amanda and her team for their dedication and commitment to the Corinium Museum. And it is really a job well done. Preserving history as well as ensuring history is interesting and interactive for all visitors and future-proofing for generations to come. We are grateful to all our friends for their support and do urge you to consider joining us. Let's commit to exhibiting and showcasing even more history. Thank you. So, there we have it. A new lease of life has been given to over 600 rare objects and artefacts, now displayed in incredible spaces and exhibits, telling the story of each and every amazing piece. I'm so proud of this museum, and it's so exciting to be invited today to launch the new Stone Age to Corinium galleries, opening to one and all. This truly does mark a new beginning at Corinium Museum, a museum that, as I say, I believe should be valued as a national treasure. Come and enjoy a great day out with family, friends, Romans and country folk.